What's going on, people? So, I had to flip my little calendar over for the month because it's June now, right? And so now I have old Jay Plays drums up there prominently featured on the old Sneaker Hearts calendar. Well, I picked it up a couple months ago. Maybe some of you know that. Anyways, I'm not sure how I feel about him being up there in all my videos for the next 30 or so days, but I'll figure that out later. Anyways, for now, what we're here to talk about is actually this right here. Picked up another Ultra Boost. If you've seen enough of my videos, you kind of know that I'm a bit of a fan of these. Ultra Boost and Air Maxes make up the majority of my collection, right? And when I saw that they had the 6.0 coming around, I gotta say I was very underwhelmed by the pictures. I feel like I was not the only person that felt that way. But, me being me, I like to pick a pair up and see what I think for myself because that's the only way to really know what you think about, right? The kicker is that you gotta wait for a sale because buying these things at full price, to me, it just doesn't make sense. These things come in at 180, that's kind of a lot, right? And they never really sell out unless it's like a special one. And even then it's kind of like, not usually. So I figured I could wait, which is good because Adidas did throw that sale out there. I forget what it was, I think maybe 30% off. Either way, they came down to about 130, maybe 135 shipped. And that was enough for me to jump on them, obviously, because now here we are to talk about them. So, let's talk about them, right? Again, just to remind you all of what we're talking about here, this is the Adidas Ultra Boost 6.0 DNA in the non-dyed and blue colorway. I can't remember the exact blue that they called this, but does it really matter? I I'm thinking it doesn't. Anyways, let's go ahead and start this thing with the bottom, shall we? Down there, what you're looking at is pretty much the same outsole you've seen a million times over the last however many years with these Ultra Boosts. You got that continental rubber, the black stuff outlining the boost. And then down in the middle, you have that old school torsion system that they've been using for a while, at least on these anyway. On the 20s, they changed it, but not on these, obviously. So you got that going on. Not a whole lot, right? Moving up here to the midsole, same thing. You know, it's your standard stuff that you've seen a lot of times. Just your white out, whited out boost. Nothing too special about it, though it is comfortable, so I'll give them that. But now, as I often say, we'll talk about the upper, which is where things start to really, you know, take a little bit of a shift, right? And I'll be doing a comparison along with the different uh, Ultra Boost from like the one through the 20, right? Just to kind of tell you where some of these inspirations came from, though some of you probably already know. Not everybody does. So, Let's go ahead and start this thing with down here around the toe box. So down there, what you're looking at around here, you do have a nice kind of a off-white sort of color going on. It's not quite like a gray like those six or those 5.0s. It's more just like a weird white. So you have that, and it is, you know, you do have a little reinforced area behind there, which is always good, you know, so it's not just straight up prime blue, yeah, prime blue on here. So there's that for you. And then moving back a little bit, you do have where it starts to kind of show you like the different stitching patterns and all that. So if you look at it closely, you can kind of see where there's elements of this right here is the 2.0. So you can kind of see little bits of the 2.0 down there on the siding, right? And you can also see elements of the 1.0 on the top area just a little bit and on the side as well, right? So it's just where it depends on where you look. So I'm not going to get all into the details because the pictures kind of cover that. And so that's pretty much just split between that same off-white sort of color and that blue. And so along with that, you do have, and you're going to see there's the general theme is just that the colors and not the colors, but the stitching pattern just kind of switches up throughout the rest of the shoe. So I won't cover everything necessarily like verbally, but we'll, we'll at least show you some pictures. I say we like someone else is here. They're not. Anyway, so moving back just a little bit right around here for the cage area. They are still using that same cage type of thing that you saw on all the other previous Ultra Boosts, right? Being the ones to the fours. But this time, this cage right here, it's a little bit different. It's, it's a very stiff plastic, but over the top of it, it feels kind of like there's just some, I don't know, almost like tissue paper or something like that, right? Because, or excuse me, yeah, toilet paper, I should say. It feels almost like that because it's somewhat soft but because it's so thin and it's over this really thick piece of plastic it doesn't really feel soft you know it's kind of weird but from what they were saying this is made up of some percentage of recycled fishing nets so that's probably why it feels so less than pleasant i'll say that but anyways you have that in something of a whitish bluish color there's a bit of a mix in there I, i'm not a 
fan of the cage personally, like this particular one, I just don't like it. But it could just be the coloring or something, or maybe it's because, you know, sometimes you don't like change. Either way, you have that. And then behind it, you do have that whole switching up of the patterns and everything. So you've got the lines, kind of like the 3.0s, right? So this being the 3.0, switch that over here. So you got the lines kind of like the 3.0s going on on the siding. So there's that for you. And then that kind of switches around just around here. Sometimes it's kind of like thicker lines, sometimes a little bit thinner, you know. And then as you move to the back, up here towards the top area, you have more of what you saw on the 4.0s. This has been the 4.0s. So as you may recall from the last video I did, these do have a bit of a more blocky sort of feel going on, especially like when you look at the back area and all that. And then right here around the toe box, that's kind of where that's coming from on these right there. So we'll put that down and that kind of sums up everything from the ones to the fours. But as you look at this, you know, you see all that, but then you move to the back and that's where it kind of stops, right? It's a very quick stop, like it's very much cut off. And then it just goes into this white section, right? So if you look at that, that's more like what they did with the 20s. So this being, this being the 20, you can tell it's got all the prime blue. And then once it gets to the back, it just stops and goes with this sort of a nylon type of feel. That's somewhat what they did here. It's just that it's not as soft as it is on here, right? So this part, I mean, it's not bad or anything. It's just that part was kind of plush. This is not so much. It feels almost like every other Ultra Boost as far as the, the thickness and stuff goes. It's just that to the touch, it's just not, not as great in my personal opinion. And then finishing off like the upper area here, switching back over anyway. So you have these laces, which are the, the standard laces that you're gonna get with a pair of shoes like this, right? Nothing too special about them. And then behind that, it's all that same pattern that we were showing earlier. And where it kind of changes is when you get to the top, you have this little stitched on Adidas logo. Normally on other pairs, it's been kind of a little piece that's like 3M and just kind of laid on top of there. However, they do that. This time they did not do that. And that is somewhat the same style as they started when they introduced the Ultra Boost 19. So you can kind of see that whole thing that they did up there. Again, slight shift from that. Now what I was saying before would be more like you have on the 20s where these have the 3M piece up here. These, not so much, it's just straight up knitted. So you have that, and that's pretty much it as far as I can tell from the outside for the most part. Last little piece of this here puzzle down here. This feels very much the same as the actual cage does. So it looks like it would be soft, but it's not. That, that was just my take on it from when I saw pictures. And then down here you have Ultra Boost down in blue. So all in all, that pretty much covers everything about the outside. So real quick, we're gonna cover the inside and then we'll touch on a few comparisons between this and the 5.0. So down here on the inside, that's looking very much like everything you saw, basically yeah, from, from the 5.0, right? It's got the prime blue, prime blue made with Parley Ocean plastic, that sort of thing going on. And that's basically it, right? Nothing fancy about that on the inside. So one other thing to add in about these, and I'll kind of touch on this later, probably during like the sizing and how they feel and stuff. But when it comes to the outside of this, 50% of the upper is made out of textile. And then 75% of the textile is made from recycled plastic. So that's where the prime blue piece comes in. And you'll also notice that when you, if you haven't worn a pair of Ultra Boost in a few years and you're expecting a certain type of feel, yeah, you're not going to get it. And that's why, because it's not straight up knitted. There's a little bit of plastic involved. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the 5.0 real quick, and then we'll get moved on to all the sizing and stuff. So this right here is the 5.0. I picked these up recently. If you care to see more, there is an actual review on them. But just looking at them as far as the comparing of the stitching patterns and all that stuff, so you can see it is just a little bit shifted around on the toe box area. It's not any like crazy contrast or whatever. It's just that if you look at it, you might have to take a glance or two before you see exactly what is different right and then catching from the side side view same sort of thing going on there and then as you get to the back area there it is a little more different obviously for one being that the back of this they kind of shifted up everything after that you know kind of like they did on the 19s and stuff so i'm mean, assuming the, the 20s so over here it doesn't do all that right and you have more of like the, the blocked area that you see on the fours 
Whereas on here, like the four section mostly comes in at the top. And of course, the other big difference being the tongue type area. Again, I'm not quite gonna call that a tongue for sure, but that's what's going on up there, right? A little bit different. So I believe that kind of covers everything. I think enough pictures in here and that'll kind of get the point across. So that means I don't have to say everything and you can just kind of see stuff, right? Because who wants to listen to me all day? I don't. I don't want to listen to me at all any day, personally. Anyways, now I think we're good on the outside. So we're going to go on and talk about the size and comfort, all that stuff. All right. These right here, I bought these in my normal Adidas size, which for me is nine and a half, right? That's the size that I buy in pretty much everything. So I went with these because I knew it was going to make sense. And sure enough, it did. So for me to you, what I would say, if you're not sure what size to get, think about the last casual type shoe that you bought, go with that size. Now, because of the way these are made, yeah, they are a somewhat snuggish fit, not as snug as like the previous models like the fours and all that stuff or even the 5.0s but if you give it some time it'll stretch out just a little bit so i wouldn't think too much of it but if you're concerned you can always you know i guess go half up or just rely on a return policy and get those exchanged if they don't work out for you whatever makes sense to you do that i'm just a guy giving you some things to think about anyway so past that past the sizing once you get everything figured out for that and you're walking around in them then how are you going to feel? Well, I'm thinking you're going to feel okay. Are you going to feel amazing? I don't know about all that. Because something about these is a little bit different. The knit seems to be a little bit thinner, which is kind of a good thing on the front area around like the toe box and stuff. So walking around in these compared to the 5.0s or the other earlier Ultra Boosts, I kind of prefer those over these. That's just a slight personal thing. But as I was saying, these do feel a little bit lighter, a little more breathable. And if you look at the extra perforations on the front, you can kind of see why that might be. But then one of the drawbacks personally is like when you come to the back area around where like, you know, you actually put your foot in and all that, where the Adidas logo is on the tip of the tongue area, that part, because of the way it's made it, and whatever socks you may or may not type, may not, may or may not wear, that could kind of dig into your foot just a little bit. I wear socks with mine, They're like the low cut ankle type socks, but even for me, I didn't really like how this was kind of like pushing into my foot. It might get better over time, but it's just something worth throwing out there that if you're comparing these out of the box, that is definitely a problem to me. I didn't really notice that on the 19s or the 20s though. So I think it might just be something they did with this or maybe just or maybe it's just me, I don't know, but it's something to think about. I want to just put that out there because I feel like it's important. But other than that, the shoe overall is a little bit lighter as far as weight, or at least it feels that way to me. So if you're looking for something lighter and more breathable, this might be your guy, but there are some things about it that kind of make me lean another way. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at a pair. Hopefully they start making it in the store so you can just check them out that way. But for now, I've said a lot of stuff about these, so we're just gonna get this thing wrapped up and all move on with our days. I got other reviews to record and stuff, you know? But I think that's about it. As far as my personal opinions and all that, as far as the visual goes, I kinda, I'm okay with it, but overall, I think I still side with the 5.0s. I just kinda like that more. I don't know what it is about it. They're very similar, you know what I mean? So it's not like it's a huge difference, but... And then the, like the cage thing, I wasn't really in, into that. And then the, the way this is done. Yeah, overall, I'm still a 5.0 person myself, but once I wear these for a bit, maybe that'll kind of change my mind. We'll see what happens over time though. If I do another review of a pair of these in the future, well, maybe I'll have some updated information at that point, but I don't for now. So I'm just gonna wrap this up. From me to you, have a nice rest of your day or rest of your night, whatever it is, wherever you are. I'm gonna record this little performance review over those things over there. And then I think I might be done. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Later, people.